After 24 years, legendary director Ridley Scott returns to one of his most iconic franchises for one last ride. It's Gladiator 2, Rise of an Empire. Oh no, that's right. That was a different movie that had a lead character that was only a shadow of the one that came before. Let's talk about Gladiator 2. Before I talk about Gladiator 2, spoiler free in this review, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe and the notification bell, because you're surely gonna wanna stick around after what I imagine will be the greatest review of this film you ever hear ever. Step aside, Russell Crowe, you fat piece of shit. We have a new generation coming along, and this one features a younger, spryer, less exciting, less stoic character named Lucius, played by Paul Maskell. Lucius has seen better days. He's been taken prisoner after his city has been burned to the ground and enslaved by a bunch of assholes from Rome. Now he is forced to earn his keep, <laughs> battling it out in the gladiator arena, known as the Colosseum. You're learning stuff here. We all are. If you saw Gladiator back in 2000, you kinda know what to expect here. Couple poor souls tossed in the arena, some lavish experience is gonna take place where the crowd gets all riled up, you got some freaking tigers to battle, or maybe you're on some horses and you're fighting with swords, it's just crazy. And who of course could forget about the rabid CG monkeys that you have to battle just to get into the arena, or the rhino that you'll go head to head with. <laughs> and of course my personal favorite, fucking sharks. There is a point in this movie, it's in the trailer, where they somehow fill the arena with ocean water and have sharks swimming around. Not just one or two, but like eight of them. What are the logistics behind this even? How do Romans gather a bunch of sharks and put them in an arena that they just filled with fresh water? I don't, I don't, I can't comprehend. I can't wrap my cock around it. It's bananas. It's absolutely bananas, Gwen Stefani. And I think that's maybe the perfect way to describe Gladiator 2. It's bananas. Whereas the first film was a serious, gritty, grounded affair about a man who loses everything, forced to fight the people he helped to protect for many years, becoming more than just a man, becoming a symbol, hope to rally behind. Maximus was a legend, the likes of no other, and this movie is gonna remind you of that every five or so minutes. Because you see, fam, this is a legacy sequel. Love our legacy sequels. It's a, it's a playbook at this point. You bring in some old characters, you do a ton of references to the old film, tip the hat, maybe play an iconic theme song, maybe have the new character do something the old character did, maybe he finds a weapon or an artifact or something that takes him back, or it means nothing to the character, but to the audience, it means everything. It may sound like I'm being hard on this film, but actually, I enjoyed the movie because I enjoy legacy sequels as the fluffy garbage that they are. <laughs> Like, I watched Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice had a ball, had a blast with it, because I'm not going in with any sort of expectation that these are going to rival or be on par or even get close to the greatness of the original. It's almost impossible depending on where you're coming from. Now, Maverick, I think, was able to buck the trend because I don't think the first movie's very good. Now, I know that's sacrilege to some. Top Gun holds a special place in people's hearts. I never enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of a crappy movie with a dumb love story thrown in and hampers the film down. It doesn't have much of a plot to begin with. Maverick is kind of a douchebag in it, a cocky know-it-all. So Top Gun Maverick fixes all of those problems, ups the spectacle, ups the ante in every possible way. It truly is the best legacy sequel, bar none. Gladiator 2 has a much harder hill to climb because the original is a freaking award-winning masterpiece to many. It was so unique, it was different. Everything worked in that film except for Except for the really bad slow motion. I never liked that shoddy, choppy, shitty slow-mo they did. Peter Jackson uses it in Lord of the Rings. I don't like it then. I don't like it now. And Lord of the Rings, my favorite trilogy of all time, hands down. But 
you can still have problems with movies and love the living hell out of them. That's something that I think is lost in a lot of online discourse now. I'll nitpick the fuck out of something. I might have a problem with a big chunk of a movie, but I still can enjoy it. And that's where I'm at with Gladiator 2. I did enjoy it. Do I think it's a great movie? No, my daughter did. I took my 15 year old, we did a back to back Wicked and Gladiator 2. She loved Wicked, said it was her third favorite movie of all time. We walked out of Gladiator and she said she liked Gladiator 2 more than Wicked. <laughs> so so it's, your, it's your number two of all time or, or Wicked dropped to number four? Well, what are we doing here? God, I miss being that age where movies were just magical experiences. And I didn't have this cynicism and jadedness in me where everything just feels like a product now. It's all manufactured, it's all memba berries. Over the years, I've been given a lot of props for the good parenting I've done with my kids, showing them a lot of the classics, raising them the right way. Well, it's time for me to take a beating because I'm gonna admit this on camera, you can do with it what you want. I did not show Olivia, my daughter, Gladiator 1 before going to this film. I wanted to, I wanted to, but this was kind of a last minute arrangement. I didn't think she'd be wanting to see this film. She does want to watch it now. She's very eager to see it now and I'm gl I'll gladly rewatch that with her. But the primary reason I didn't rush to make her watch it before scene number two is I really didn't think it would matter much. I didn't think this was going to be a legacy sequel the same way a Ghostbusters Afterlife was. I thought Gladiator 2 would make some vague references to the first movie, maybe pay a little homage, but I did not think it was going to be so nonstop with the references, the callbacks. It was a bit much and I felt bad. I mean, I gave her like the little overview of what happened in the first movie, but still her not knowing that stuff definitely would take away from the overall experience. But then on the other hand, I almost did her a favor by not showing her the first Gladiator because she was able to have a blast with this, with fresh eyes. Everything was new to her. She'd never seen a movie like this before. And I do believe there's going to be a chunk of people that do the same thing. They're going to go to this film not seeing the first. And for them, this experience is going to be better. Now, is that justified? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's an experience. And that's why I'm not that hard on these legacy sequels. If the movie is still competently made, has some good dialogue, has some fun characters, has some cool set pieces and action, and it's doing the job of entertaining and bringing you into that world, I'm not going to knock it too much just because it doesn't hit the expectations that someone like I have because we love the original so much. It's a tough rope to balance on, but I think that's the fairest way to look. Approach it how you want, but just keep in mind now, we've been doing the legacy sequel for a while and they're not getting much better over the years. They're just kind of following that same formula every time. Now I did start this review by kind of knocking poor Lucius and I stand by it. L listen, he's not Maximus. Nor does it seem like he's supposed to be. He is his own person. He's his own character. It's just not near as exciting as watching Russell Crowe be a badass with that stoic, stern nature he has. There is what they call in Hollywood an it factor. Crowe had it in Gladiator. Denzel has it in every movie he's in, including Gladiator 2. He's playing a very fun character here. Pedro Pascal, who's also in this it factor. When he was on screen, I was loving it. And he does have a good arc. And I am being very vague on the plot because, you know, it's a two and a half hour movie. If you, if you already know the whole story going in, you're gonna be sitting there for a while just wondering when the next arena event's gonna take place and not really following along. Because there is, there is some good stuff mixed in with a lot of the familiar things you remember from before. But this is a cartoon compared to the first. Very over the top events in the Colosseum. Silly antagonists in this one. Instead of one emperor, Commodus, we have two with these buffoons in the sequel. They're unlikable little shitheads, which is engaging and definitely fun to watch them dismantle. But it's also like it comes off as really a cartoon. It really does especially with some of the ridiculous CG stuff going on in this. Overall impressions are positive. That doesn't mean rush out and see it though, unless you are just ready for more of that combat in the arena, then you're gonna get it for sure. And it's not bad. I do not think this is a bad insulting film. 
it's just more of the same done in a way that we're all getting maybe a little sick and tired of seeing and paying our hard-earned money for. Definitely didn't set the world ablaze though. And um, yeah, I'll stick with the first movie any day of the week. Okay, let me know your thoughts. Hopefully you revisit this channel as I will do a spoiler video. It's gonna go a lot more into the, the plot of the film, breaking things down to the best of my ability. Always a fun time reenacting some of the events. I get very into it, maybe a, maybe a scary amount. If you wouldn't mind also liking the video, just throwing a comment below if you saw it or not, if you're excited now or if you're less inclined to go, I would appreciate it. And lastly, maybe think about joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There are different tiers that offer different benefits. Even at $1, you get access to 300 exclusive videos. These are nice quality videos that I've had tucked away in my vault and I think you'll appreciate them. If you go higher, there's exclusive monthly reviews, vlogs, a show called The Cringe that you get access to every month at the $5 amount. That show's hilarious. Highly recommend any of the tiers though. It helps this channel and my one-man band. I would appreciate it. Hopefully I see you next time.